Welcome, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. Another box battle episode. I did one for Upper Deck a little while ago, one for Tops. Panini's turn. A little twist here. I'm doing three. It's not a tournament of uh, the finals. It's a tripartite agreement. I've got three different products here, all 21, 22, uh, all basketball, all from Panini. And uh, each product interesting. Uh, the first thanks sponsor. Sponsors other than Panini, thank you, especially Panini, but thanks Tops and Upper Deck, Heritage Auctions, Huxton Scott Auctions, Mike Stadium Sports Cards, Burbank Sports Cards, ComC.com, and Beckett Media, Beckett Grading, Beckett Authentication. These three different boxes, the first was Hoops, the more popular priced, I saw one set, and that was 24 packs with eight cards in each pack. Open those up. Takes a little bit longer to open that up, but I didn't mind that. Again, I love cards. The next box was uh, 2122 Elite. I like those. Uh, 20 packs, eight cards in each pack, and about 400 bucks on the street. More than double the hoops. And then you go to the Origins, which is 2122 Origins, the more premium product. That was one pack of seven cards in the pack, but two were autographs or memorabilia cards at 600 bucks. And I saw it as low as 500, but uh, 600-ish, 550, 600. That's a lot of money for seven cards, and yet you could get something really good. Generally, the higher priced boxes mean you have a better chance uh, at a better card. That's really what it comes down to. You may get more cards in some of these, but you've got a better chance to get a better card. And the, your best card is probably going to be more valuable, and you've got a better chance of getting it. Of course, you're paying uh, double or triple. You could get more than three hoops boxes for the price of one Origins box. And you'd have a bunch of cards. You might even have a complete set. One thing I noticed, I'm going through this. Uh, first of all, that on the hoops box, you've got Cade Cunningham on the box on the front. I don't know how much he uh, sold in his Pistons uniform. I'm sure that makes a statement that he was a touted the number one pick. He's hitting his stride now toward the end of the year. Jalen Green on the elite box. Jalen is hitting his stride perhaps, but you, you just never know, even these top lottery picks, which ones are going to hit. And I always think it's the speed of the game. I just remember every time I jumped up a level or played with better people in, in pickup basketball and other le city leagues and things like that, there's just another level of speed of the game that if you're not used to it, and it takes a while. It actually, it took me a long while, but it didn't seem to affect Luca. That was the criticism. Luca isn't that fast. They're, they're going to be blurring by him. And in fact, he just had his way of uh, working into the lane and uh, putting up the floaters and doing other things that did not require speed or quickness as much as just a sensitivity to uh, where you are and where the defenders are. So Luca was on the box of the Origins. I like that. I thought maybe I'll get a Luca in there. And when I'm looking at these boxes, and thank you, Panini, for sending me these uh, three boxes. Thanks, Jeff Hoffer and all your Panini friends there. I'm a fan. I've got season tickets for the Mavs for 32 years. I'm looking for Mavs and other uh, local interest players. And especially I'm looking for cards that are good enough to go on my card wall. It doesn't have to be the guy's best card, but it needs to be a meaningful card. And it's meaningful if I got a box from Panini. I'm looking to be able to pull out a card or two that I can get slabbed and put up on the wall. And then when somebody sees it, I can say, this is where I got that. Another way to, to tell the story. It doesn't have to be the best card, but it ought to be a meaningful card that I can tell a story and, and needs to be a good enough player or somebody that I have a connection with. That's what I'm doing. I'm looking at this. You know, if you're buying a box, why would you buy a box? Would you buy a box to complete the set? On the low end, you probably would. Uh, of the hoops, on the high end, I don't think you're buying boxes to complete an origin set because it just would get too expensive. And frankly, as I've said, I can find them in the dollar box, some of the base cards. That, you know, seven divided into, say, it's $80 a card on average. Now, you no card is worth $80. They're either worth a lot less, but some of them can be worth a lot more, and that's how it seems to work out in the way they, they price these things. Another thing I noticed on the packs as I was going through this is that there's a GC12 of 21 on the hoops packs, which is, I think, graphic converting December of 21, which might mean when it was packed out. Same thing with Elite. It was GC0122. So that would be January of 22. So we know that these products have been backed up on the Origins one pack that's in there, the one pack of seven cards, there was a GC0222 on the box. The Origins was the last one released. It was just released in mid-March. There was really nothing on the wrapper that made reference that there'd be stuff on the wrappers on the packs, but there weren't. It, it's maybe they're just squeezed. Graphic converting, not the manufacturer, but the printers 
really have difficulty with putting all this stuff together and with the press time and all that. So I thought, what's the best card that I possibly could get from each one of them? I think hands down, you've got to think that Origin has, again, it's pricier, but if I'm judging by what's the best possible card I could get, Origins would be a good choice. But I've never thought about it. Origins also has the benefit of the worst card that I could have gotten out of those seven is still going to be a good card. It, it might not be easily saleable, but it's it's still a good card because it's in a, in a very premium set. Whereas hoops, if you get a, a nondescript player uh, that's uh, since quit or been sent down or is riding the bench, that's just a very base common, and you can have several of those. Each one of these products has a, kind of a great ability disclaim on the box, not just that they make no representation as the future value of the cards, or that its cards will receive a, a specific professional grade, <laughs> as some imperfections are possible during the production process. And I think that's, again, legalese, but we were talking about how Tops really wants to make sure all their cards are eight or above uh, on the paper products. On these uh, glossier and thicker ones, there's all kinds of surface potential and edge damage. Corners can be dinged. I only got one Luca. <laughs> In all three of these boxes when I opened them up, I'm just madly going through them. And it was a low-level Luca insert. So it will not go on the wall, but it'll still go in my little Luca pile of okay cards that I can show people. They can say, what do you got for Luca? I did get a card for my wall, and I just want to thank Panini again. It's one of the better cards I've gotten. I got an Evan Mobley autograph, and that will be sent to BGS. And when it comes back, it'll go up on my wall. I actually remember Evan Mobley and his brother playing for USC in NCAA, and I thought, that guy, he looks really good, but he's sure going to get bumped around in the NBA. I wonder if he has what it takes. He wasn't an absolute sure thing, but he sure has uh, performed this year, and he's worthy of being on my wall. He, he may go on to have a long career. The no-purchase option that I've mentioned in some of these others, they that you can send in a 3 by 5 card. I've done a little more research on that, and I'm going to send in a couple just to see what the procedure is. It's worth the price of a stamp. On the other hand, the hoops, no purchase necessary offer, that window is already closed. <laughs> so I, I can't do it. You have a limited time. You have to do it. And when you do it, then they'll get all the stuff, which I'm hearing that it's not even thousands of people doing it, but hundreds of people are doing that. And it's still going to be in the same odds. So it's very tough to expect you're going to get something really great because those are very limited. And the no purchase option was claimed on the Origins box, but it wasn't on the wrapper. It looked like the wrapper did not get the full printing. It just had Origins on it. So I'm going to give that a try anyway. I thought I heard that graphic converting was purchased by Fanatics. Now, maybe it hasn't gone through, or maybe I don't know about that. But again, they were doing a lot of printing for Panini, too. We will see about that. I think most companies don't want to turn down business. And if Fanatics did start doing things like that, there'd be maybe some antitrust. And it seemed like that wouldn't be playing fair. In each of the boxes, I got something good. That's the strategy nowadays for how you're going to do cards. You can't have somebody pick up a pack and get zip. So each pack, and it's usually in the middle of the pack. And that's the frustration of, you know, I go way back, but 60 years ago, more than 60 years ago, when I was buying my own packs of Topps cards, I wish they'd have put the Mickey Mantles and the Roberto Clemente's in the middle of the pack, but they didn't. So it could be next to the gum or get the wax stain of the ceiling if it's on the bottom of the pack. So it could be with the gum. Each of these, except for Origins, mentions that it's ages 9 plus. And I, I don't know why it'd be 9 plus instead of 8 plus or 7 plus. I think a lot of people start collecting at 7, kind of a first grade kind of thing where you're learning to read. And I don't know if there's something special about 9 plus to be 9 to collect. 8, 7. And now 6, I think if you're, unless you're an early reader. Origins... Again, for the price, they probably need to do this, but they, they were the main ones that emphasized that they were on-card autographs and not sticker autographs. Again, for 600 bucks for a box or 550 you ought to get on-card. But again, the, to, in Panini's defense, whether it's on-card or not, it has to do with when that signature is going to happen and where it's going to happen. And uh, they're not going to march down to the printer. <laughs> so they've got to figure out a way to get the cards cut, signed, and back, and in the packs if they're going to be on. Again, the challenge, there are plenty of printers in, in the world that can print cards. There are just not that many sorting machines that insert. And the insert is not random in one sense, is that there are a lot of one-per-pack kinds of inserts. But then there's inserts that are every... 288th pack or every some large number. And in the old days, you had somebody, I think, sitting there putting it in every once in a while. I know Pacific had a, a machine that I think Mike Kramer invented to do that, but it isn't truly random. It's every 
so many ones, it'll put one in there. Origin was uncannily like Inception that Tops does. So I guess the, the companies don't exactly copy each other, but there are some things they do that, that perhaps are best practices. Hoops, I wanted to say it was a bargain, but I don't know. I, I did best with Origins. That's where I got the best card. And actually, anybody would have been pleased in the Origins. I, I did well on that. I got a lot more good cards from the Elite than I did from the Hoops. But then again, it, it's more than twice the price. I enjoyed the Elite. I think that those are very nice looking cards uh, on the base cards. Would have been fun to put a set together like that. But basketball that Panini is doing here, the, basketball has just enjoyed such a great ride. It's the, the, the smallest rosters, very fast game. It's very visible with the players being right there. Even the farm system, which is the, the colleges, there's a lot of visibility there. I don't know that people are going uh, over to Europe like Donnie Nelson used to do to uh, scout Europe. I, I suppose they're all doing that now after after Dirk and Luca. So you can do your own homework to see of the younger players who you think might hit. So what would I do after I have these three boxes? Would I buy, since I had such a good experience value-wise on the Origins, would I double down on Origins and buy another one? Just because one box, I got a good box, it's a statistical fallacy that the next one is bound to be bad, or I'm on some kind of a run, the next one's going to be good. I think each box has what it says inside, and it all depends on what your best card is. Um, so the other thing I was thinking about is that when people are deciding which ones to get, a lot of the action in the hobby is based on uh, bragging rights and flexing and uh, getting cards that you could bring to a trade night. Not so much that you could sell it, but you could show it off. So it's got to be uh, above a certain level. It can't be a $10 card. It can't be a $5 card. In my day, a $5 card, a $10 card was fine. It was what it was worth. If you needed it, you tried to get it. But again, getting it slabbed. So I'll have a number of these. I'll get slabbed. The other thing I was going to say that I enjoyed, again, I think that some people lock in on a product. The way I'm doing it, again, I'm the exception and I'm not the age demographic or maybe even any kind of demographic with the typical Panini purchaser. But getting three different boxes and open them, I thought that was more fun for me. I don't know if that's more fun for you. But I wasn't thinking, hey, I, what's the best, what am I going to make the most money on? I was thinking if I were buying one of each, I'd be pleased with each one and I'd be extra pleased with the one that I did well on. But like I said, I wouldn't be going back to Origins to complete the set. I would be more likely probably to do the Elites. And I think there's enough cards in the box, at least the base. I think it'd be hard to put together the rookie set. But the base set uh, would be good. So, at any rate, uh, thanks, Panini. Thanks, Jeff Hoffer. Enjoy these Panini basketball products. I know they're backed up, but they got some to me that I had fun with. So, thanks, everybody. Have a good time. I'll see you tomorrow. The man